And it's my pleasure to welcome Rana Adib here, uh, joining us from Paris. Rana, you are Executive Secretary of the uh, REN21, the Global Policy Network for the 21st Century, which is a very broad network of mainly non-governmental stakeholders. And uh, one of the main products of the outcomes of your work is the Global Status Report. And I must say that I'm very pleased. We as World Wind Energy Association are, of course, a member, like all the other REN Alliance partners. We've been able to contribute to this important publication. You just published it, I think it was uh, around two weeks ago, giving an update of where renewables stand globally, where there is some uh, positive signs, but also you, I think, have something to uh, tell us about how we, where we have to become better. And I look forward now to hearing from you firsthand. It's a great pleasure having you here with us on board. Rana, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, uh, Stefan. And thanks a lot to Peter also for introducing uh, or going back into history and the beginnings of uh, Rentrin 1, I guess. Um, Stefan, could you confirm if you can see my slides, please? Yes. Okay. Good. So, um, as Stefan said, we are we are a broad network, and I think this is um, this is something I would like to underline. So, um, it is not only non-governmental players, uh, to be honest. So, Rentunon is a global community of uh, players from science and academia, NGOs, indeed, as Stefan mentioned, industry, but also governments, uh, represented by, directly by governments, but also intergovernmental organizations. And uh, for instance, IA and IRENA are part of Renthunan and are even part of the Renthunan Bureau. Um, what makes Renthunan special, I guess, is this messiness of many players working together, but uh, with different perspectives, but which are clearly um, also allowing us to tap into decentralized intelligence and create crowdsourced um, data and knowledge that um, creates an ownership and an opportunity for different perspectives uh, working together and bridging different perspectives. So we have approximately um, 90 members, but a community of 2000 members. And we're very much using basically, um, so building on the community, we produce this uh, knowledge and data with the objective to inform and influence decision makers to advance renewable energy now. Um, this renewables now has really been added uh, recently to underline the, the um, to underline the urgency. I think what is important to mention, maybe since we are going back into history, historically, Rentunon has very much started its work and also the analysis from the supply side. Today, it is very clear that it's about moving to an efficient and renewable based energy system and uh, ultimately an economy and society. Now, before going into the global status report results, I think it's really important to frame the discussion and say like norms can evolve and i think this is really what we all need to work towards to making the norm evolve and uh, make renewable energy mainstream so recently we have seen and uh, i see paolo so you'll hear more about this um uh, we have seen that many players are actually participating in making the norms evolve and that norms are also evolving on some player side so with the iaa net zero scenario um I'd say like a, maybe not the only, not the first messenger, but a very special messenger. And this clearly changes um, the debate with regard to this and messages sent to governments. Um, we have, however, also seen that driving change and changing norms is also pushed by citizens, civil society, courts and shareholders. And here are only just some recent examples. But I think uh, the development of renewable energy and what, how renewable energy has delivered during the last year um, is really important to put in this perspective because we have other ways we need to drive this change today. So 2020, and this is, uh, so I'm going to present you uh, basically the results of the latest Renewables Global States Report that looks at the status of renewable energy in 2020. What we see here is 2020 was actually a year of new norms. And this is not only the case from the renewable energy side. I'm not going to go into detail here, but what I would like to keep in mind from 2020 is governments in response to COVID and the economic impact have been um, able to mobilize resources, um, give leadership decisions, take decisions, even though there were many unknowns. 
So it shows that it's possible. If governments want to do it, they can do it. The other part is clearly that 2020 has shown a peak in terms of net zero targets and commitments. And so here are only the ones uh, from the national government side. So um, I think 31 targets. What is interesting here is possibly these targets. Uh, so cover 80% of the global CO2 emissions. So huge potential. The reality is, however, today that only about one fifth are actually in law. I think for 2020, however, a message is there is a new norm in terms of ambition. Now, the question is, do we walk the talk when it comes to renewable energy? And is this in line with the net zero ambition? And unfortunately, the message here is uh, a bit critical. Um, here, we're only looking at the G20 countries. Uh, we see that for 2020, um, only five countries had a renewable energy target, economy-wide. I'm not speaking about the power sector only, for instance. And of those five countries, only three have reached those, um, those targets. And I think there is clearly um, a necessity to acknowledge that, and we see it in, even in the NDCs, we see it, that even though there might be a commitment to decarbonization, it does not directly translate into the acknowledgement that fossil fuel is the key problem to address and that efficient and renewable energy is the key solution to this problem. So targets is always a question, is a target enough? Obviously a target is not enough, we need policy and regulatory framework. So um, that's a figure which we um, use in general to show basically the sectoral disconnect. So lots of policies on the renewable energy side for power, less on heating and cooling and transfer. And I would say like the situation is even worse than less because they have been stagnating or even going down. And um, this is clearly something which is, uh, which is worrying because again, it does, not, it, it does show that uh, there is a, a disconnect between the ambition and what is really happening. Now a reality check in terms of uh, the renewable energy markets because as Stefan said, there are many positive news. So one positive news we have heard is uh, renewable energy investment have increased 2%, so reaching 304 billion US dollars in 2020. That is something which in times uh, of economic pressure as we had in 2020 is something which is really to underline because it shows the resilience of the renewable energy. I would however like to put these 2% into perspective of what would need to happen and IEA and IRENA have uh, have indicated this, that uh, on average, the investment in renewable energy must triple by 2030 on average. And this means comparing 2% to 200%. See, I just leave it like this. Another aspect is, and again, lots of great advantages and, and developments on the renewable power front. Here we have a share of 27.1% when we're looking to the power sector. And this is clearly also showing in the trend of electrification of uh, the heating and cooling and the transport sector as a trend. The reality, however, is that we are actually not yet at a fuel switch, uh, which has reached 100% renewable energy. And with uh, approximately a quarter, let's say a third, if we're positive, we're far away. The other part is also that heating and cooling is, um, we use more than 80% of our energy demand for heating, cooling and transfer. So this is heating and cooling in buildings and industry and the transport sector. And you see that the shares are really, really low. And I, I echo this again with the policy developments here. So in terms of reality check, it's rather a worrying message. What I would also like to underline with this uh, slide here is we need to clearly move from a renewable energy supply thinking, it's not about a fuel switch only, to a link to the energy demand. This is fundamental. And this also means that if we are asking governments in terms of uh, to change their behavior as an energy community, we also need to change the behavior. And I think this is why this uh, message of um, all renewable energy technologies uh, working together is very important. I think it's also important to even broaden the discussion beyond the supply side. And um, this is basically the result of 10 years of pushing for renewable energy. The renewable share and total final energy consumption has moved between 2009 and 2019 from 8.7% to 11.2%. 
At the same time, the fossil fuel share has moved down from 80.3 to 80.2. And I deliberately pause here because I think this is actually what is extremely worrying. And to be honest, as a renewable energy player, we feel a bit like weird that this is a message we are, we are showing, but I think it is our responsibility to show this because it's actually not enough to tell the positive renewable stories only if we are creating by this blind spots about the structural change that needs to happen. What does this slide mean? It clearly means that it's not enough to support energy saving, energy efficiency and renewable energy. There needs to be a conscious decision to shift away from fossil fuel. And this is something which is extremely important and where there, as a renewable community, we also need to work very closely with players who are pushing against the fossil fuel because it is about moving out of something into something new, into something different. So the renewable part of it is fundamental, but this moving out of something is also fundamental from the renewable side. Now, admittedly, when you're thinking about players who might not be convinced yet that renewable energy is a route to go, you could ask, can renewable energy deliver? And I think this is, uh, we still see there are myths out there on the variability. Uh, we need base load, intermittency, um, it's too costly, high grid shares is not possible. I mean, these are, even though renewables might be the best solution, it is often not yet the preferred solution. So I think asking, asking this is clearly just a fact. The reality is, and especially when we're looking to the power sector, yes, renewable energy can deliver. It's not a technological, uh, it, it's not a technological question. It's about creating the right market conditions. It's about creating the acceptance. And when we are looking here, um, so more than 250 gigawatt of renewable power have been added. And this has been a record year. It has been driven by solar PV and wind in particular. Um, also uh, some, some hydropower um, and interestingly also clearly the development of offshore capacity. So new renewable power capacity hit a record increase globally. So I think this is something which is interesting because it shows what the next slide underlined that this is happening because renewable energy is not, environmentally, not only environmentally the best solution but also economically. So here we're looking at the um, fossil fuel, um, sorry, at uh, the new power generation uh, generating capacities and uh, over 80% have actually uh, been building uh, based on renewable power. And that's clearly because it's often a least cost option. And today in some countries, it's even less expensive to build new renewable power capacities than um, using existing coal capacities. And I think that is something, that's clearly a shift which we are going to observe during the next couple of years. Um, another aspect that we'd really like to underline is when we are speaking about a broader transition, we also need to think about other players driving the transition. And often they are not only traditional energy players. So here um, the corporate power purchase agreements show that um, corporations have really get, got engaged into renewable power. And we have a growth rate of capacity here of 18% compared to 10% when we're looking at renewable energy power development. And the feedback we have from players like RE100, for instance, that they say for our members, renewable energy is not uh, done for social or environmental reasons only, um, even though ESG is clearly one of the drivers too but it's about energy security, it's about energy cost, it's about, uh, it's really an economic solution. Now, um, 2020 was obviously in the COVID time, um, there was clearly a call for changing the game. And I think this is uh, building on the announcement that uh, the US dollar, euro or whatever uh, unit you want to use can only be spent once. So here was clearly the understanding that the COVID recovery packages would be needed to use the shift, the structural shift required um, to address climate change. Unfortunately, and I'm really sorry, I feel like uh, I'm bringing very negative uh, <laughs> messages to the discussion, but I think we need to be, uh, to be really real and realistic and blunt about what's happening. Fossil fuel has been supported six times more than renewable energy in the economic recovery packages. 
And this is an analysis building on 31 countries. So, and I think I'm going to end here. And this is not uh, this is not only about the global state support 2020. I think there is really a need to acknowledge that what needs to happen during the next 10 years, and we collectively need to work towards it. And we need all solutions. We cannot afford in-house fights between does efficiency come before renewable energy, which renewable energy technology, etc. There are local contexts which differ very much. So it is about collectively working towards making renewable energy mainstream. This means a political focus of governments at all governments level, creating market acceptance on the energy supply side, but also on the energy consuming side. And I think this clearly also means that we need to bring other players into the discussion that are often not yet sitting around the table. And then very clearly the community acceptance. And um, here we see that there is globally a support for renewable energy, but locally a pushback. And that's clearly something we need to address as players. So the necessity is to bridge basically the renewable energy topic outside of the energy bubble. Now on the structural shift to renewables, there is a new norm of ambition, and I think this should be our reference point because it's guiding the way. You see, like here's the street and the roadmap. It's clear that setting net zero targets is not enough. We need the roadmaps and we need regulated frameworks. And long term um, targets, and I think uh, IA and also ARENA have actually underlined it, are not enough. We need medium term markets and uh, medium term targets and short term targets. Acknowledging that we need to to drive the structural shift from fossil fuel to renewable energy in all societal and economic activities. And uh, from one to one side, we are clearly calling for making renewable energy, in particular the renewable energy share, a key indicator to track the structural change and progress on supply and demand side. And here we are calling for making this not only a target, but a key performance indicator for every policy, economic activity, investment decision. Why a performance indicator? Because it is not enough to know, it's not enough to say, I want to go and win the Olympics. I need to perform toward this goal. And this means like training, it means working with the right persons, it means acknowledging and making basically the advancement transparent to. Oh, no, you're muted. Suddenly you're muted. Okay. Yes. And uh, where was I muted? Something has happened. Okay. What did you hear last, Stefan? Uh, just it was just uh, two sentences or so. But it'd be uh, kind if you conclude soon now. Okay. So um, maybe like uh, so I, I I don't know where it ended. So probably that from rent on one side I'll just uh, take this part again. Um, we're really calling for making the renewable energy share. Um, a, um, a indicator, a key indicator on the supply and demand side and to really track the structural change that is occurring. But we are calling for more and it is really about uh, making renewable energy, the renewable energy share, a key performance indicator in every policy, economic activity, investment and decision because we are speaking about an energy systems change, about a societal change and economic change and uh, that many decisions are outside of the energy space but also a performance indicator because it's not enough to just have the goal, but we need to perform toward this. And this means like bringing a clear transparency about are we there or not? And this is clearly required since there is a, such a gap between the ambition and what we observe in the real world. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Ran. Has you you're not only presented us the status of renewables and great progress in some parts, but also what the challenges are.